Hey, what's up guys, this is uh, Tarek. Zwift released a big update this past week and it has been rolling out in phases, but you all should have it by now. And this update takes us from version 1.34 to 1.39. And there are a couple of hidden gems that I want to talk to you about, particularly for Apple fans. But before we get to those, let me run you real quick over what is new in this update. First up, Zwift has made some changes to five of the seven existing power-ups to improve their effectiveness and uh, usefulness. The draft rock power-up, you know, the one that gives you uh, a draft boost is getting a bit of an upgrade. It's gonna last longer now from 30 to 40 seconds. So 10 extra seconds of drafting goodness. And Zwift says the draft effect will be even stronger. So that is pretty sweet. I'll take that one. The next one is the feather power-up. My favorite, which reduces your weight by 10%. Now, instead of enjoying your feathery weight for only 6 to 15 seconds, you can now enjoy it for a whopping 30 seconds. That's twice as long. Can you imagine all the cool things you can do when you are 10% lighter? I mean, think about it. You can climb hills faster, sprint to the finish line like a pro, or even impress your wife with your feathery weight for 30 seconds. And the anvil power-up, which does the exact opposite, and this one adds weight to make you descend faster, has its time reduced to 15 seconds and the amount of weight addition has been changed to be a percentage of rider weight instead of a fixed weight. And now my least favorite, the burrito power up. This one gets rid of the draft effect around you and uh, they've made some updates to it as well. Now, instead of lasting only 10 seconds, it lasts 20 seconds which you know is going to be just terrible if you've ever raced on Zwift. My last race was full of burritos and I was left feeling like how you feel after eating a Taco Bell burrito. Oh, and they also tweaked how it works. Now, only affects riders in a cone-shaped area behind you instead of a radius around you, which I, can, I guess kind of makes sense. And finally, the ghost power-up, which makes you disappear, has had an increase in duration from 10 to 15 seconds and is no longer usable when the rider is less than 400 meters from the finish line. So you got to think strategically when to use it when in a race. All right, let's talk about the interface. You might have noticed it's looking a bit different, especially the pairing screen. Steering is now taking center stage. And speaking of steering, it's going to be enabled by default for all events. Yeah, this major change might ruffle some feathers in the racing community. I bet it will have a bunch of you on the hunt for steering devices now. If that is the case, do not worry. I've got you covered. I'll drop a link to or two to a couple of steering devices that I have reviews in this channel in the description below. So check those one out. Zwift has also organized the main setting screen into two different tabs, preferences and sound and display and you'll notice that Zwift has added explanatory text below each of the settings to help you out. And uh, while we're talking about menus and settings, Zwift has made some improvements to the workout area by adding folders to the custom workout interface. This update does not bring new features, but it does make finding workouts a whole lot easier. For example, Training Peaks and Today's Plan workouts now have their own folders, and it is much easier to find these workouts Thank you, Zwift, for this. It's way easier to find my Training Peaks workout now. Thank you. Plus, if you organize your uh, custom workouts into folders on your Mac or PC, these folders will show up in the custom workout UI and they will sync across platform. But just keep in mind that additional subfolders are not supported, so do not go crazy creating subfolders. Okay, moving on to Apple devices. As Zwift users and Apple devices, good things are happening. Starting with version 1.39, Zwift won't support OpenGL on macOS anymore. From now on, they will only support Metal, so all Apple platforms will use Metal as their graphics API on Zwift. Metal is basically a graphic technology uh, developed by Apple that provides a more efficient way for apps to access the graphic processing unit or GPU, and this means better performance and smoother visual. And with this update, if you have an Apple M2 device, you might notice some extra resolutions being added. I've got an Apple MacBook Pro M2 and the ultra setting is back along with a 4K option. You heard that right, a 4K 
option, which is the same as of what I have on my gaming PC that I have been using just for Zwift. Now the graphics profile on the M2 is still set to medium, but honestly the details look pretty similar to the Ultra profile on my gaming PC. There are some things missing. So for example, uh, as you see here, on the gaming PC, there are a lot more greeneries, a lot more trees than what I have on my M2 MacBook Pro. But overall, nothing is too obvious and you still see rider shadows and a lot of other details in the M2. And the frame rate, which is pretty important, doesn't take much of a hit when you switch to 4K resolution. In a quick test I did during a busy group ride, my MacBook Pro M2 averaged 111 frames per second, which is pretty darn impressive. Generally, anything around 60 frames per second is considered good, so this is definitely just amazing, and clearly Zwift is still experimenting with the M1 or M2 processors, so we might see them moving the M2 to the Ultra Profile and give it the same graphic resolution and graphic profile that you see on a gaming PC, because the M1 right now is on a high profile, so I'm kind of surprised to see the M2 on medium profile, but we might see that change and I will, I'm okay taking a hit on frame rate. I'm okay if it even drops to 60 frames per second. If you happen to own an M1 or an M2 device, let me know what you are now getting as far as resolution and graphic profile. Another update or should I say fix that's been long overdue is the Apple Watch heart rate pairing. It is finally working and I have been able to use my Apple Watch with Zwift on multiple rides so far, even up to two hours. And to pair your Apple Watch, just make sure uh, you have the Zwift Companion app installed on both your phone and your Apple Watch. Open the Companion app on your phone, then head to the pairing menu on the device you are running Zwift on, and you should see the Zwift Companion app open automatically on your watch and the pairing process will begin. You might find it not as seamless as pairing other heart rate monitors, so you might need to try a few times if it doesn't work right away. But once it is paired, you will see an in-game message on your watch and your heart rate should show up. Overall, it worked well for me except for a couple of drops in signal here and there, but overall, I, th I thought it was solid. Oh, and finally, the Coffee Stop Zwift announced a couple of weeks ago is coming on May 11th. Coffee Stops lets you hit the pause button for a quick break up to three minutes without losing your spot uh, alongside your ride buddies, uh, whether you are in a meetup, a pacer group, or just freewheeling with other Zwifters. All right, a lot of exciting stuff in this update. Let me know your thoughts and uh, what are you most excited about? And if you've got any questions or comments, just drop them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I hope you find this video helpful. Do not forget to give that like button a little tap and if you're still watching but haven't subscribed yet, well, you know what to do. Thanks again and I'll catch you guys in the next video.